Hi folks, this is Jay, and I uh, hope everybody's okay. Um, I lost my sermon that I did. I must have been on different settings or something, and uh, I lost uh, my sermon. And I want to uh, preach the Word of God and to do that again. So I don't think I'll be getting anybody listening now. Uh, there was about 8 to 19 listening before. But I'm going to go through the sermon again, and uh, because I've lost the sermon that I did. So I'm going to preach my sermon again. We can keep it for record. And, um, and I, I just wanted to show for that uh, I'm okay, and just relaxing, and uh, getting on with things. Father God, we come before you today and we confess our sin and we acknowledge our failure and we acknowledge the weakness of our hearts and we acknowledge our need of your grace and our need of your love. And so Father, I just pray for your forgiveness today. I pray for your cleansing and I pray for your mercies. I acknowledge the weakness of my own heart and Father, I pray as I preach your word now, that Father God, you be with me and help me, and help me to bring glory to your name. I confess my foolish way, and I acknowledge my need of you today, in Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. Um, So Ephesians chapter 3, for this cause I Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me toward, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me also am less than the least of all the saints is given grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which, the purport, perp, which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him wherefore I desire that you faint not at my with your glory for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all fullness of God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end Amen so I'm preaching again that sermon because I lost it because of my default settings were not correct and I had to change them again and so I was able to save history 
of histories but I have not was able to save the sermon so I'm going to preach the sermon again so I understand if people don't want to listen again um, but uh, I want to minister the word that's why I came on tonight uh, the history of histories was just a little flourish a little thought so Lord we, we just come to you today we acknowledge Lord our sin we acknowledge our failure and the weakness Lord and Father I pray that you would be glorified today that you would be honored the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory Lord that you will bless your word and that Father as I preach your word that you will bless and so God I pray that you would be in this word today that Father you would minister it for your glory to people's hearts I ask this Lord in your name and for your glory Amen uh, as I was saying uh, today I've been listening to um, Paloma uh, Faith and um, a great song about only love can hurt like this it's a great song and she wrote these words only love love can hurt like this only love can hurt like this must have been a deadly kiss only love can hurt like this what is hurting you at the moment so you finding difficult what is the future holding for you? To me, the song by Paloma Faith shows us how in our own hearts we can have anguish and struggle and wonder what the future holds. And I've got three things that the future holds for you, that God wants for you today as I minister and share that message. I hope it's a blessing to you and an encouragement to you. Number one, God wants the grace of God for you. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Ephesians 3.7 Wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. The Apostle Paul of God. He was a man he wanted to pass on the grace of God. What is the grace of God? It is undeserved mercy. It is the love of God. As I said before, imagine a hospital without patients. Imagine a hospital without doctors. Imagine a hospital without nurses. What a horrible sight. Imagine a fire station without a fireman. Imagine army barracks without an army. A hospital has to help people. A fire station has to put out fires and an army barracks has to hold an army. So here's the question. What does the church have to do? What is the church to do? What is the church to do? One writer said, Paul a channel of God's grace to men. That is the job of the church. The church is to be a dispenser of the grace of God. C. H. Spurgeon, a Baptist minister, one of the great preachers of the 19th century said, I am bold to tell you that my master's riches of grace are so unsearchable that he delights to forgive and forget enormous sin, the more glory to his grace. You write again. I'll read it again. I am bold to tell you that my master's riches of grace are so unsearchable that he delights to forgive and forget in enormous sin, the more glory to his grace. The grace of God means that whatever sin you have committed, however bad you have been, however much you have failed, God will forgive you if you turn to him. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 and 14, Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he has counted me, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and 
a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. He says, before I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious, he was a horrible man. But then it says, I obtained mercy. I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. The abundance love of God, the abundant grace of God, no matter how much you have sinned, no matter how bad you have been, God can cover all failure. Paul was a great sinner. He was a great murderer. He was a, a blasphemer. But God showed him mercy. Barclay, a liberal theologian who I don't fully agree in his theology said, but in the ancient world the barriers were, were complete. No one had ever dreamed that God's grace and privilege and love were for all people. But in the ancient world, the barriers were complete. No one has ever dreamed that God's grace and privileges and love were for all people. The grace of God, the love of God, was, is for all people. For all people. For the prostitute. For the adulterer. For anybody whoever in society whoever feels that they're not wanted whoever feels that they are so sinful that they could never ever be forgiven you can be forgiven you can know the grace of God you can know the love of God you can know his peace and his joy you can know it today if you turn to him my friend, I don't care what you have done. I don't care how sinful you have been. I don't care how bad you have been. I don't care uh, someone would just Skype with me those who are trying to Skype me at the moment I'm just preaching and I'll review Skype request tomorrow okay um, I'm just preaching tonight but thank you for those who want to support and encourage me It says, but in the ancient world, the barriers were complete. No one had ever dreamed that God's grace and privileges and love were for all people. My friend, God's love is for you today. I, I'll say it again. I want to press this on. His love is there for you. I don't want you to be in that corner. I don't want you to be weighed down with your guilt today alone I don't want you to feel that you're pushed out of society that you're blacker than black that you're viler than vile because you're not because God came down and he died for you and God wants you to be in his family God wants to put a, a hope in your life and peace in your life but you cannot find it until he comes to you and he will come to you if you Realize that he is there and wants to save you. 1 Timothy chapter 1, 15. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the chief. I am the chief of sinners. 1 Timothy 1, 15. I am the chief of sinners, says Paul. And yet he knew the salvation of God. He knew the grace of God. This is of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief.
He was the chief of sinners, yet God showed grace to him. You can be the worst of the worst today. You can have a heart of fire. You can have a heart of bitterness. You can have the most bitter, vicious heart today. But if you confess your sin, and say, Lord, forgive me, he will forgive. So what God does want for you today is the grace. Secondly, he wants you to have the riches of Christ. That's what he wants for you. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8. Unto me who am less than the saints is this grace given. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Ephesians 3 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Ephesians 3 8. Paul saw his task is preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. There was a museum a music museum and Tosani a musician took some people round the museum and brought them to a very famous musicians piano and as the people gathered round the piano Tosani said this gentlemen I am nothing you are nothing Beethoven you know that if Paul was here today, he would say, Gentlemen, I am nothing. You are nothing. Jesus is everything. You see, the unsearchable riches of Christ means you have everything in Christ. Not about wealth, but spiritual wealth. You see, if you have Christ, you have God. It says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2.9 For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2.9 All the riches of God are in Christ. All the mercies of God are in Christ. All the blessings of God are in Christ. And if you have Christ, you have everything. You can feel poverty stricken today. You can feel as if you are nothing. You can feel that if you're a nobody today, you can feel that you're a waste of space. You can feel that you've got nothing going for you today. You can feel wretched, vile. You can feel all these feelings. But today, if you believe in Jesus Christ, then you have all the unwritten unsearchable riches of Christ are yours it's like the great train robbery the great train robbery they nicked a load of money in the 60s from the trains they took the bags of money they went down to the farm and they emptied all the money in the farm and it was an all farm room full of money And they became rich. But when you believe in Christ, you have the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's more than money. It's the riches of God in Christ. You have everything in Christ. In Acts chapter 19, verse 17 to 19, it says, and this was known to all the Jews and Greek also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Many believed and came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. All the black magic, all the dark oracles, all 
the horoscopes and all the rest of it, all the occult of that city. They brought it all together and they sold it, uh, they burnt it all and it came to 50,000 sil, I think, was it? 50,000, the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. All the occult books burnt. You can be wallowing in the occult today. You can be in the black arts. You can be in devil worship. You can be in a witch's coven. You can be delving into the occult. But these people found the unsearchable riches of Christ. Riches of Christ. They found the unsearchable riches of Christ and they dumped the occult as fast as you could say diddly squat. Because they knew that the occult was darkness and that Christ was light. They'd found the unsearchable riches of Christ. And if you're messing with the occult today, if you're messing with a witch's coven today, if you're messing with the dark arts today, if you're messing with demolo demology or de uh, devil worship then you're messing with darkness and you're living in darkness and you need the unsearchable riches of Christ to set you free and you find it in the blood of Christ in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 it says and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin 13 but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Romans 10.13 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13 Isaiah 55.7 Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and the Lord Love, pity, and mercy for him and to our God, for he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. Isaiah 55, 7. For he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. The riches of, his, of Christ are that Christ... shed his blood for you on the cross took punishment for you took judgment for you died on the cross for you gave his life for you shed his blood for you gave his all for you the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin all sin however bad that may be But it was his blood. It was divine blood. It was precious blood. It was the blood of the Saviour. Crucified, nailed to a cross. Nailed for your sin and my sin. The dark voices in your mind are only there to pull you down. They're only there to enslave you into the occult. But Christ's blood is there to set you free. Christ's blood gives you freedom. Christ's blood covers you with his peace and his joy and his comfort and only wants to do you good. That is the blood of Christ. And all you got to do is believe that he died on a cross for you. So, we've seen the grace of God for you. We've seen the unsearchable riches of Christ for you. And then thirdly, the love of God for you. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18 to 19. Maybe alone to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 18, 19. That you might be filled with with all the fullness of God. But notice, 
and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Ephesians 3, 18, 19. Imagine you had a, a massive debt, a 20 grand, you owe 20 grand and you had to pay it tomorrow. And you're worried sick and someone comes and pays your debt tonight. The 20 grand paid in full. You're relieved. But you've got a debt to pay. You've got a debt to pay to God for your sin. But you don't have to pay. He paid it. He paid it with his love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 But God being rich in mercy because of his great love in which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved Ephesians 2 4 and 5 1 John 4 9 and 11 and this is the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him in this is love not that we have loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation that is the appeasement of God's wrath for our sins beloved if God so loved us we also ought to love one another 1 John 4 9 and 11 so we come to the end and we come to that song again by Palama Faith and she said say I wouldn't care if you walked away but any time you're there I'm begging you to stay when you come close I just tremble and every time every time you go it's like a knife that cuts right through my soul God has given you salvation he died for you on that cross and he's given you all that you need in him You've got to confess your sin and believe in him. But if you turn away from him, then he has to turn away from you on judgment day. In Matthew chapter 25, 46, it says, Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous eternal life. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. They will be punished with everlasting destruction, shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power. 2 Thessalonians 1 9 and through him and unto uh, and throw him into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth Matthew 13 50 the Bible teaches there is a hell I don't understand it but there is a hell and if we reject God we will go into lost eternity without him and whether that be real burning or not, I don't know. But I do know this, that it will be a separation from God. Which, because you would wish that you followed God and trusted in his Son, who is God, who, who, who gave himself for you. So let me ask you, please, Christ has given you all the riches that you need. He has given you all that you need today. He has given everything for you that you may live. He's given his life for you. He's, he's died for you. He shed his blood for you. And all that he wants for you is to know his love and peace. To know his forgiveness. His grace. That's what he wants for you. And all your cleverness and all your hardness of heart is turning away from his love for you his love for you so will you not come 
Will you not come and drink of the water of life and trust in him? Will you not come and for ask for forgiveness? Ask for his grace? Ask that he would forgive you for what he did for you on the cross? Please, please trust in him. Please ask for forgiveness. Please drink, drink of his peace, drink of his joy, drink of his love, drink and drink and drink him, for if you drink him you will never thirst, for if you drink him you will always be satisfied, for if you drink him you will always have a father who is there for you. Father, who cares? There are times in my own journey, as many of you have seen, where I have been struggling with depression, with problems, with difficulties. But I can say, I can say with Job, I can say with Job, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and I know that he lives. I know that he is the truth. I know that he's the truth above atheism, and I know he's the truth above Islam. I know he is the truth above any view or ideology. I know that Christ died again. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And you know something you don't know? You don't know him if you have not trusted in him. You don't know what the future is without him. If you do not trust him, you cannot say you know. You cannot say when you die you will know. You cannot say with confidence because you are building on straw. You're building on men's ideas. Job said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know. I know. The question is, do you know? The question is, will you bow the knee to Jesus and realize that he wants for you his grace, his love, that he wants for you the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. All the sweetness. All the joy. All the peace. All to know Jesus. Is life. All my friends. Come. And drink of Christ. Confess your sin. And believe in him. Trust in him. Find peace and joy and forgiveness in him. For he commands and he is open for you to come to him. And he will pardon every sin that you've ever done. And you will be a new creature in him. May God bless you and thank you for listening. I'm going to close in prayer. And I trust that this would be a this has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. May God bless you. And uh, feel free uh, if you want to promote uh, the gospel. You don't have permission to use this video if it's for any other purposes than to preach the gospel. Okay, thank you for listening and God bless you. We're going to close in prayer. Father God, I thank you for your grace and your love today. I thank you for your blessings and I acknowledge that you are my God. And that you're my saviour and you're my Lord. And Lord, I pray for these folks today who've heard this message. That Father God, you would bless them and you would encourage them. I pray that they wouldn't feel they're alone. I pray that they wouldn't feel that they are too sinful not to be forgiven. But I pray that they would turn to you and find forgiveness and find your love and find your grace and care. And so, God, I pray that you would bless them, that you would encourage them, that the Father would meet their needs, that you would save them, 
that you would give them your Holy Spirit and bless them, Lord, today. May they come to know you and trust in you, Lord, in your name. May you be glorified in this video. I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. 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 Let's see what time it is, folks. Okay, it's uh, time to go. So, God bless you, and have a good evening. Take care.